In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the One Day Classic Homepage Illustrator mockup and to quickly change the colors and fonts, a couple of workflow tips. So every time you start a new project, you're going to have a copy of this file and it will already have all of these boxes. We're mainly going to be working on this artboard over here. This will be the homepage mockup that we'll show to the client and the team. But notice there's a few other things over here. We built these for our specific page builder. Um, but if you have your own page builder, it's a good idea to pre mock up some of the header options. So partly so the designer doesn't get too creative and do something that would be really difficult to pull off in a one day. And also just to give yourself ideas of remembering what all our options. We also have in typo, which is the built in font. Um, the icon font that we have in our page builder, this is a good idea to have these handy just so you're not redrawing, you know, basic icons like a search search icon or things like that. And for speed, we also have these image sizers and column sizers. These are the exact sizes that are already built into our page builder. You're not totally limited to those, but again, this will just save some time and um, make sure that the designer is using what's already pre-available in your page builder. Here you can see the fonts that we've got on our, on our swatch board. And again, this is what we're working on right now. So let's say we are designing a mock-up for Cedaron, which is a customer of ours. And let's say we don't have any brand guidelines, but we do have some logos that they gave us. So we're gonna pull the swatches from there. So I'm just working on my other monitor. I'm just gonna drag over a few of the logos that they sent us. And we're gonna sample the colors to create a color palette. So I'm just using the alt, holding down the alt, key on my keyboard to zoom in with my the scroll on my mouse and open up the swatches panel here. You can see these swatches are the ones that we're currently using, including one pattern swatch. Um, I'm just gonna use this eyedropper tool. The keyboard shortcut is just click I on your keyboard and you can start sampling some of the colors. So we're gonna sample the pink, the purple, the dark purple, We already have black and purple from that logo. And then maybe this really light purple we'll use also as a background color. And then um, we already have the black and white. So we'll just get rid of these logos for, for now. Um, so now that we have these swatches, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the old swatches, just holding down my shift key to select all of them and click the little garbage can and get rid of those. I'm also gonna delete that pattern swatch. And so what we're left with here is our main swatch, our main swatches. We're just gonna put these in order of what we think is the most likely use of them. So I wanna maybe use the dark purple in place of this teal. Um, and then this pink and those two are gonna be at the end. They're gonna be sort of our accent colors are the ones we aren't gonna use a lot. And now we're gonna use the recolor artwork tool in Illustrator to change all the colors at one time. The first step is we have these swatches. We're gonna save them as a uh, color library. So just click save swatch library as ASE. And we're gonna just call these Cedaron swatches. You can see I have a bunch of these that I was doing as an experiment. Cedaron swatches, and you'll see a note if you have patterns in there or gradients. Sometimes those don't play well in the library. But now that we've saved our user-defined color library, we're going to select everything on the all of the artboards. So hit your Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac to get everything selected. Now go up to Edit, and then look Edit Colors, and then Recolor with Preset, and then Color Library. Here we can choose User Define and find the swatches that we just made. Let's do Cedaron swatches here, and hit OK. Now the recolor artwork, you can see already, it's recolored a whole bunch of things. And we may or may not like that right out of the gate. Some of these choices might not be our, exactly what we want. So then you can just scroll down here. Here's where you can see that main blue color is being replaced by black. I'm gonna double click on that because what I actually want it to be replaced with is the dark purple. So hit okay. And you can see that changed everything. And then that might be a little much pink for me. So I'm gonna um, go get the yellow, double click on that and change that to the other purple and hit okay. 
Um, and I think everything looks pretty good just on a first glance. So I'm just going to hit OK. And now if we zoom out, you can see that all of the blue and the yellow has been replaced. We a few things didn't go right, like those got turned to white. Um, you can just kind of do a little cleanup to make sure that that all looks good. That's probably going to want to be white. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that all, all looks pretty good. So we've turned all of the blue and yellow into two different shades of purple. Um, you can see a couple things that turned pink, but not much. Now we're going to use the font replace tool to change all of the fonts. So the first thing we're going to do is just change a couple of the fonts. Let's say we know we want to use Muley Bold for headlines. And let's say we want to change this one to Muley. The reason why we're doing this manually is just so that these fonts have been recently used in this document. And you'll see in a minute later, right? That just saves us a little time. So now we're going to go up to the type and find and replace the font. This is gonna show me on the top, all of the fonts that are currently being used in the document. So we have Montserrat regular and bold, and then you can see Muley bold and Muley regular. I wanna replace all the Montserrat regular with Muley light. And again, this is where you're gonna, uh, Muley regular, I'm sorry. Um, you're gonna see that here in the recent fonts. If you hadn't changed that, you'd have to kind of dig around to get to all of your system fonts, which you can do here. But we already have that, so I'm just going to click Montserrat regular to Muley regular and hit change all. And then now we're going to have Montserrat bold. We're going to change that to Muley bold and hit change all. And you can see now the only font documents, uh, only fonts in the document are Muley. So we're going to hit done. And you can see already, I mean, those fonts aren't all that different from each other, but if I click on them, you can see everything here has been changed to Muley and all of the colors have been changed. Now, one other thing that I like to point out in our template is that we have these buttons um, created as symbols. You can see the symbols panel over here on the right. There's two different buttons here. And maybe I wanna add a little pink here. Um, to edit a button, you can see there's buttons there and that button here and that button here. And the reason why we use symbols is because you can double click on that. You'll see a little thing that says you're about to edit the symbol, hit okay. And I'm gonna change all of these to pink with black text. And you can see now that changed it there and it changed it in the footer. And then let's say we wanna change this other button to maybe the other purple. So just click on that, click the other purple. And again, you can see we changed all three of those buttons at one time. Then let's say we don't wanna use that pattern. That pattern is up here. We can just delete that. And from here, we can go on and just change anything else manually that we wanna change. But you can see in just a few minutes, we've already gotten a really good start on our mock-up and making it look more custom for this client.